Okay, we had the new parts come through from the factory. We'll get them on the car ahead of FP1. Good news to hear on the return to F1 2018 career mode. I nearly said 2019. What a uh, dilemma that would be if we were already into the next game. But anyway, here we are for episode uh, number 10 of season 3 of F1 2018 career mode. Uh, we had a major downforce upgrade go on the car, uh, which is nice to see. We have a ultimate ERS upgrade in the works. Hopefully going on the car in time for, I think it's Hungary. I can't quite remember. It has been a little bit of a, a break between this episode and the last episode go out, going out. I've been distracted by league racing. Yeah, just league racing, pretty much. But we have Renault uh, leading the way now. The top of the constructors over Sauber. It's only by a smidgen, but it looks like it's enough to possibly displace those guys from uh, winning races from here on out. They've been building to it, to be fair to them, for the last few races. And now they are truly a title contender now in uh, this championship season of career mode. But they're a long way behind in the standings. They, they need to keep developing their car to make sure they consistently win, although they might be at their level now. Salva have so much of a good morale within the team. They have so much momentum going for them at the moment. It's going to take a lot for, for Renault to really knock their confidence, shall we say. But here we are for qualifying. Uh, you can see we're last place at the moment. Seem to be struggling a little bit for outright pace, it seems, despite the car feeling quite well. I will uh, say that I was chasing setup quite a lot in... Uh, practice uh the car was like really really oversteer it was very unstable and i think maybe the front downforce has just tipped the balance in terms of this car just a little bit too much i had to run like one nine wings in order for the car not to completely spin out at cops uh at turn one and even at stow on some examples so i've had to go a bit conservative and i feel like maybe i've got too much rear wing on the car uh, despite only running with 8 ballast, I tried 9 ballast, but that was just too much. It was far too much, so it's a bit of a compromise. I, I, I do feel very slow in a straight line, and I think that might be holding us back in this uh, round of the championship. But we'll have to wait and see how it goes. It's already too late to change the setup. We go across the line, and we do make it through the qualifying too. But you can see we're actually outpaced by our teammate for the first time since Bahrain, I believe. Uh, and Stroll goes through to qualifying too for the first time this season, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe this is a first for both of us making it through Q2. Uh, I didn't improve. Uh, the lap that I did at the end of Q1 was actually a really amazing lap. I only had one shot at it in Q2, and uh, we just didn't deliver. But uh, we actually moved up. We, we went from 14th in Q1 to 13th in Q2 with a slower time. So the AI uh, dropping the ball a little bit in terms of pace. Maybe the track condition wasn't quite there. That would probably explain a few things, but otherwise, it's a it's an okay grid position for the race. Um, the thing that worries me is yeah, the straight line speed. The car feels amazing. It's it's hooked up. It it goes through corners amazingly. But I just feel like I've got this. Um, I feel like I'm driving a sailboat really uh, against the currents, against against the wind, and. Uh, that could prove to be a problem in the race if we get overtaken a lot. But I'm hoping that it'll be fine. It's going to be a big slipstream fest. Silverstone, um, there's so much of the lap just spent at like full throttle. So if we're in the slipstream of, of another car in front, we're amazing through the corners. We might be able to duck and dive through uh, the traffic quite well. Our tire wear is really good. Um, so there's a lot of things to look forward to in this race. But um, the pace, uh, despite getting an upgrade coming into this one... Seems like we've gone backwards ever so slightly in comparison to the last two races. But it's time for the race now. The British Grand Prix. Important race this one. Let's claw back some points to the championship leaders. If that's at all possible. We're right back where it all began. The very first World Championship Grand Prix was held here at Silverstone in 1950, with Giuseppe Farina taking the top step of an all Alfa Romeo podium. He earned nine championship points that day on his way to the inaugural title. His winning total at the season's end, just 30 points. By how times have changed. So let's see who can reach the top step of the modern podium today. 
Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's talk briefly about Carlos Sainz. As ever, the threat of unreliability is never far away, and indeed they'll be starting out of position today due to a power unit component change. So it's going to be a difficult task to move forward from there. Everyone has to deal with penalties or reliability issues from time to time throughout their career. You just have to suck up the pain and get on with the job at hand. Today isn't about performing a miracle to put the car back where it should be. It's about effective damage limitation. OK, this is the team's home race. We're all relying on you to impress today. OK, as if I didn't need any more pressure. Thank you, Jeff, for that one. Here we are on the grid for the British Grand Prix. Um, as I, I feel like I'm placing a lot of pressure on myself now. I... I I, I want to perform and I want to deliver and I know that that's like a really unrealistic expectation but I, I want to push myself further than what I've ever done before and see if I can win this championship. That would be the absolute dream but the expectations are just too high for that. We just don't have the car that is ready for that but with more development hopefully we'll be there by like Spa Monza time but here we are for the race. Five red lights and away we go for this British Grand Prix. Uh, a few people down the order a little bit as we get a horrible start heading into time one. We'll get back to uh, all of our competitors uh, once this race settles down, but uh, side by side by side, three wide, should I say, into turn one. Turn three, um, nearly clipping Brendan Hartley as we go up his inside into that right-hander. It turns to the outside for this next left-hander, and that is us up in P11. So, all in all, after all that squabbling and jostling for position, we only find one place on Alonso, which is better than going backwards, I suppose. But anyway, the end of the first lap, you can see we're trying to cling on to this train that involves uh, Brendan Hartley, uh, Force India, and a couple others. We've got Fernando Alonso right on our chuff here. He's looking to maybe go up the inside at the end of the uh, hangar straight, but he thinks better of it. You can just see there visually, uh, just holding up this bit of a train I just feel quite slow on the straights and it's just a, a very uncomfortable feeling knowing that I could be overtaken at just about any moment. This is uh, Hartley and Ocon going side by side into Stowe. We go around the outside there as Ocon was just completely, I don't know, he just he just felt out of place and he took himself out of the battle and in doing so he lost two positions unfortunately. So it's into P10 for us. Signs who had a grid penalty as absolutely stormed his way through the field and he storms his way up my inside into turn one had to leave the space and uh he has to bide his time for the moment but looking around the outside now as he heads into cops i decided to let him go just that little bit he's just so fast in a straight line versus like the top teams we just we can't compare uh, i'd imagine that renault probably went for a straight line speed improvement heading into this race uh, because they're Efficiency on the straights is ridiculous. He just waltzes around the outside of Brendan Hartley like he's not even moving. That's the difference between me and Hartley and uh, the Renault, for example. Like, I feel like I'm gunning this 100%. I'm in rich revs, hot lap and overtake modes uh, engaged most of the way through the lap. The ERS has been really good in terms of deployment. There's an incident there for Valtteri Bottas, who's uh, made contact with... Oh my goodness, one of the Ferraris. I think it was Vettel, and then he's clipped another Ferrari. I think he clipped uh, Kimi Raikkonen there on the exit of Cops. So you'll see there from Kimi's perspective in just a second, uh, he was a bit of a a bit of an uh, innocent party here. He goes through Cops. Uh, Bottas is stranded on the... No, he turns back onto the racing line and completely wipes him out. So it's not as if Bottas was stationary and Kimi just drove into him. Bottas literally swerved at him. Wow. So that has taken two contenders out of this race. We move up two places. Uh, Pierre Gasly is now out of the Grand Prix as well. So a lot of retirement's coming in thick and fast in this British Grand Prix. Somehow, no safety car deployed, which would have been uh, really timely for us because it's time for our pit window. Uh, we're going to be diving in for the medium tyres. A very simple strategy here at Silverstone. I feel like the, the tyres are maybe a, a, a touch too hard for this circuit. Uh, meaning we can get away with using the two softer compounds uh, around this circuit. It's even a thing in rate league racing. So this is the first time we're actually starting on the qualifying tyre. And uh, we're just having a, a straight up race of it. it this this kind of reminds me of like the old era, or older eras of F1 where you're just pushing flat out every single lap. Because we're not conserving tyres, we're not conserving fuel, and I'm not even conserving ERS. It's getting to that point where it, we can just push and the battery can take it. Uh, it's recovering faster 
than what I'm expelling en energy most of the time, which is uh, pretty weird that we're just going flat out lap after lap, and it's unfortunate that the raw car pace isn't quite there, otherwise we'd be uh, succeeding massively in this Grand Prix. Stroll makes a mistake and actually tags our right rear tire there on rejoining the circuit. We'll rewind this and have another look. Um, he was under supreme pressure from Daniel Ricciardo from behind. Goes up the inside, Stroll locks up under pressure, and then that was a bit cheeky, I'm not going to lie. But uh, we get his position. It's uh, one step forward, one step backwards in terms of our uh, order at the moment, but it looks like it's going to be a big old scrap to get this final point here in this British Grand Prix, and I'm facing my teammate of all people. Here he goes up the inside into turn one. Even he's got better straight line speed than I do, and he's, you know, we're... We have the worst engine in F1 currently. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's Struggle Street at the moment. Uh, he goes up the inside into turn one. That's almost suicide. What is he doing there? That's that's pretty crazy. Again, on the back straight, uh, he's got DRS, Slipstream. It's just rich. He's got everything at his disposal and just soars past us on the straight. The most frustrating thing is that we're actually, like, very equal pace. It's uh, just whoever gets Slipstream or DRS is just all over the back of the other person. And uh, it just means that we're just leapfrogging each other, essentially. I mean, it might be helping us, the fact that we're getting DRS on each other and, and overtaking each other. It might help us from being overtaken from the car behind, who's Sergio Perez. But at the moment, I'm just, I'm, I'm like, okay, let's just be civil about this. Let's stick in a slipstream for now. We'll save even more fuel, because I was negative to some degree. If you think you can get past, increase ERS deployment to overtake mode. And now the engineer is uh, encouraging me to get the overtake done. Because there is only six laps to go in this Grand Prix. So we will uh, get to that stage. But I'm just sticking in the slipstream. I feel like I don't need to risk the car as much in Stroll slipstream. So I'm just chilling here. Just cruising. And I'm waiting for the right moment to attack. Um, before we start pushing again. Um, looks like that moment might be now. As it looks like Stroll has possibly turned his engine down. He was previously just absolutely fine and we wouldn't range onto the back of him but now we're just all over him he's probably burned up too much fuel now he needs to conserve his battery and or engine at this stage and now we're going to make full use of that drs is open overtake mode engaged rich fuel mixture to the outside and that is us up in a p10 so it's uh only finicky little details um that are separating us in terms of pace and now that strollers been overtaken he's flicked the engine back up again and here he goes into the old turn one bit of contact is made i had to turn across him because well you weren't really alongside were you pal meanwhile this is uh brennan hartley daniel ricardo and lewis hamilton going three wide down the hangar straight lewis hamilton actually has a problem and is falling back in this grand prix towards us so it might be a scenario in a few laps where both williams are in the points for the first time in this career mode season so we're going to keep pushing and hopefully not to lose too much time and we might be able to get uh, in the battle here but i'm just praying hamilton is ahead of you gap to car in front is 5.2 seconds you're taking 1.8 seconds out of them each lap they're on old mediums their tires are 11 laps old they have some kind of mechanical problem i'm just praying that uh lewis's issue doesn't resolve itself it doesn't fix itself um, that would be a nightmare for us. Remember, I think it was Lewis Hamilton and Romain Grosjean battling for the championship at Abu Dhabi on like 2016 or something in the Manor days. Lewis Hamilton had a problem, then it resolved itself, and then he overtook Grosjean and we lost the championship because of that. I really hope that uh, whatever problem Lewis Hamilton has today is permanent and we can uh, get both the Williams in the points. Although we've gone like backwards in terms of our pace this weekend, it looks like we might be on target for a good round here up the inside into Stowe, no less. That came out of nowhere, didn't it? Here's a replay up the inside in the slipstream. I knew he wasn't really struggling in a straight line, so it had to be cornering. So I decided to just die for the inside. He had no apex speed at all. I don't know what his issue is. It's not front wing because I already checked that. But here goes Bottas. I'm not Bottas. Bloody hell. Stroll around the outside. And uh, you can just see how slow Hamilton is in the corners. You know, he's even getting overtaken by Lance Stroll. 
of all people. And now he's ranging onto the back of us once again. So it's uh, back to square one for both the Williams boys. I don't know why Stroll is fighting this so hard now. The fact that we both have points. I could understand it previously. Him, him being very desperate to get his first point in F1. But he's currently on target to get that anyway. There's no need to risk crashing out for both of us. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That was close into turn one. Here he goes again. Okay, Up the inside. Seven. I don't know seconds. what to do with this guy. He is very <laughs> overzealous in this one. I feel like Jensen Button in uh, 2014 up against Kevin Magnussen at Team Radio where he tells K-Mag to calm him down. That's what I wanted to say in this Grand Prix, but I think we might be fine now. I decided to um, just use the tyres for all that they were worth on this last lap here. A little bit of a gap emerged, and now we're starting to stretch it out, although we've uh, made it pretty sizable mistake now heading into the S's oh this is all just a bit too close for comfort losing the back end as well no less on the exit but uh, it's still P9 overtake mode is engaged let's see if we can keep him behind somehow we got DRS out of that so Stroll must have overtaken us at the absolute perfect time for us to get DRS which is a miracle for us and it looks like we're going to hold on and get two points just two points in this British Grand Prix start of the season I would have been delighted by this result but I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed all right race over take care of the car on the way in so yeah there we go that has been the British Grand Prix like I said um, from a team perspective good to see that we're both scoring points now but I really feel like we we didn't have the magic in this one at, at Austria and uh, was it Canada the round before? I can't quite remember. The last two races, I felt like uh, it was uh, France. France and Austria. The car was slower than what it is now, but we, we were just like elevated up the field and getting P5s and P4s and loving life. Today, I think I just screwed up on setup too much. Good day today. Tell us about it from your perspective. You really cut your way through the field today. What was your strategy? Do you think that your close rivalry has helped you out this season? <laughs> what do you mean close? I don't think he's scored a point this season. It's safe to say you're smashing everyone's expectations, isn't it? That was a close finish. How are things between the two of you? I genuinely mean this answer. That was, uh quite tense great well that's everything thanks Claire good to see you again after many many rounds of not seeing you for a while but uh, there we go guys that has been this episode for today the British Grand Prix I feel like we raced through that one that uh, 20 minute commentary has gone by in an absolute flash there was just so much action from start to finish um, I I've been loving the battles in this uh, season of career mode we've been right in the thick of it with the midfield having battles with uh, you know, the Force India, Sorosos, the Mercedes in some rounds. The, we've just been having some really, really good battles. It's, you know, in previous seasons, I was a bit I was a bit bored. I was a bit unmotivated. Um, and I didn't feel like the racing was as close and the game wasn't as difficult. But now, things have changed. I'm starting to enjoy this just as much as league racing. And I truly, truly believe that. Um, it'll be a shame, in a way, when our car gets faster that we won't be so much in the thick of it. But... Uh, we've still got a long way to go in terms of car development before we get to that point where we are naturally winning races. We've got an ultimate upgrade going on the car. Um, that'll be on in time for the Belgian Grand Prix if it goes on. That'll be amazing. Um, that'll certainly boost our, our chances. Um, we, but really, we need to get the engine upgrades on. Um, I, I'm just praying that we can get that ERS upgrade going and then after that we can do the power upgrade and then hopefully there are no failures. I, I cannot afford to have any failures, especially for those ultimate upgrades. We need those to go on the car. So uh, that's where I'm at in terms of the season. Ideally, I'd love to start winning uh, by Spa and Monza. Um, we realistically, we need to start winning by then uh, to be in with a chance of winning this championship. If we leave it too late, then... Um, yeah, I think the best we could probably go for is like a maybe third or fourth or something like that. But it remains to be seen. It is pretty close from like fourth onwards. So uh, we'll wait and see what happens. I've already done the German Grand Prix. 
um, up until qualifying, and I can tell you that our pace is already naturally a lot better than what it was here, so I'm looking forward to a much better Grand Prix uh, in that one, and as soon as I'm done commentating that, I'm actually going to go do that race right now, so wish me luck. Um, it should be a pretty good race, hopefully. But that's it from me today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more F1 2018 content. Let's keep the upgrades going and get this Williams back where it should be. Until the next one, I'll see you next time.